Do you think the, the movie You Only Live Once is, is the first instance of, of this uh, clearly subjective? Kind of unreliable. Uh, or unreliable. Well, almost. I mean, that, it, that, that's kind of hard to say in the sense that, you know, there is so much silent film and, uh, you know, I don't... There, the other thing is there is another movie by Fritz Long that he made mm -hmm. just before You Only Live Once, which I didn't know so well at that time, called Fury, where actually I think there is a similar thing that goes on. So that would be an earlier one. But here I'm just in a way guessing that, yeah, it's... Yeah. See, one thing that, you know, Fritz Long, as I say, was a German director, and, uh, you know, during the period where the Nazis were coming into power, and I think he had a lot of occasion uh, to be thinking about, gosh, all the ways that film could be used, in effect, to manipulate how you saw things, what your political, right. you know. And that's why I think you're getting these movies in the 30s. Now it's kind of in a more particularly American vein because now he's making American movies. But uh, he's thinking about, quite wisely, about the immense power of film for ideological manipulation. I see. So you actually just mentioned that, you know, you had this view on narration for a long time, and then Andrew Kanye came around and sort of questioned you on this. Do you think there are other young scholars in the field now that are sort of questioning the old truisms, if there were any, or taking the field in a different direction? Well, nothing I ever said ever became a truism. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are always skeptical that, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it's amazing. You, you could talk to Andrew, Andrew, and he might even be able to describe the situation more effectively than I can. At this point, there are quite a number of philosophers doing film in one way or another, and the quality of people. I mean, I think it's you know it's somewhat uneven, but. Uh, there are certainly a lot of very good people like Andrew, and uh, uh, I think it's it's kind of amazing to me sometimes the you know, way it's philosophy of film is exploding. In terms of uh, narration in film, do you see any trends that are do you think are what, what do you see as the future for this in for film narration? 3D. <laughs> well, no, more serious answer. <laughs> I don't really know. It, you know, it is extremely hard, I think, to get any perspective on the films of your own time. There's just so much to see, and uh, uh, sometimes it's so hard to get the contextual background that the reason I say this, and then I will give you a kind of answer to your question, but. Um, you know, if you look back on the history of, say, American film, I mean, most of the films that, you know, are the real classics now, that are most admired now, at the time they came out, I mean, they may have been popular, they may, but they were not the movies that were prestigious. And, you know, think of Hitchcock or, uh, say, a John Ford movie with John Wayne, like The Searchers, mm -hmm. I mean, some of the Bogart movies. I mean, these are very great movies, but you know, if you'd ask in the 40s or the 50s, what are the great movies? Those are what people would have said. So it's hard to. But you know, with respect to narration, there is one kind of trend, and I've written a little bit about this, but I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's a different. It, diverse kind of phenomena, and that is sort of twist movies, uh, if you know that term, where the movie takes a kind of an epistemological twist. You find out at the end of the movie that, you know, what you were seeing on screen really wasn't what you right. thought it was. The Sixth Sense would have been, you know, one very popular instance, Fight Club, mm -hmm. which I think is a much better movie, is another one. But there really are the other, I mean, you know, Jacob's Ladder, over the last 10 years, there's just been an amazing number of movies. And I sometimes worry that it may come to be a kind of boring cliche that, you know, all these 
film people have gone off to college and they, they want epistemological skeptics or something. But it's interesting because a lot, I mean, again, for me, Fight Club would be a very good example where, you know, you are really quite, you really learn a lot about how much you can be taken in uh, perceptually and imaginatively in watching a film. You, you, you see it one way and then you learn that no, you really can and you should see it in a quite different way. Do you think that the man who wasn't there follows that to a certain extent with, uh, with just the UFO at the end? Well, you know, uh, it's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know. There is a way in which I would want to make a broad distinction between, see, I, I just call it an epistemological twist mm -hmm. where the quality of the image changes. Uh, and divorce. I mean, there's always been, say, you know, even in the classic mystery where the plot shifts in some quite surprising okay. way. However, well, I mean, let me just say, that, but the ending of The Man Who Wasn't There does and becomes more and more subjective until in the final scene, uh, when he's supposed to be in some kind of uh, electrocution chamber, I mean, it looks like it's maybe a spaceship. So, I mean, there is some kind of shift going on, so maybe it is an instant after all that talk. Yeah, maybe something like that is mm -hmm. going on. Do you think there is an external explanation for this trend, or is it sort of an internal explanation where one film did it, it was popular, another film did it? Yeah, it, it is kind of hard to know. I mean, I, I certainly would expect that part of it is that what you just said, that somebody did it and either certain very good filmmakers thought, gee, that's interesting, or like in the case of The Sixth Sense, I mean, it was an enormous popular hit. Uh, people think, ah, you know, I better do it. So, uh, and actually, I was sort of kidding about uh, people going, filmmakers going off to college and getting, well, I don't know, I mean, that may be true too, but, you know, they take a certain amount of philosophy and they're interested in sort of the philosophical possibilities or perception or the image. Maybe that has an impact. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've got one last question for you, uh, and that is your five favorite films. All right, so you want five. <laughs> okay. Okay, th 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 okay, I'm going to give you five f films that are favorites of mine. Okay. Now, if you got me drunk and put a pistol up against my head and made me swear, these are, oh, I, I don't know. But in <laughs> fact, uh, I wonder I actually did write down and make sure I don't forget some of them. That, uh, uh, okay, one of them, that I, well, okay, one that I really like, an older movie, that if you don't know it, you should know it, is Jean Renoir's Rules of the Game. It would be about on anybody's list, but mm -hmm. it is. It's a wonderful movie and I think it still really holds up a lot. Uh, another movie is The Maldivars Talk to Her. I don't know if you've seen that, but uh, it really is a rich, it's a very disturbing movie, but very richly worked out. I'm a big fan, like lots of people, I'm a big fan of his. I'd have to pick some Hitchcock film. I guess I'll pick North by Northwest, which I've written on, but uh, you know, Vertigo is a very great movie. Mm -hmm. Room in the North, but North by Northwest is on my list. Uh, I mentioned yesterday. There's a film less well known, French director Robert Bresson. He made a number of great movies, but I'll pick A Man Escaped mm -hmm. uh, by him. And for number five, right? Th this has come to be a famous and admired film, but uh, maybe. It's a movie called The Commitments, made in the early 90s, and it's about a uh, bunch of Irish kids in Dublin who decide to start a soul band, and it's just wonderful. All right. Well, that's all we have time for. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wilson, for joining us and answering our questions, and we just want to wish you luck with your lecture later tonight and the rest of your week here at Trinity and just for the rest of your life. So okay, thank you again well, for joining you us. Thank you, guys. It was nice yeah. to be here. Thank you.